So we're just going to take a, one picture real quick, and then we're going to count to three, and we're going to cut. Watch your fingers, because those are very sharp. <laughs> real quick and brief, okay? So just smile, real nice and pretty. Okay, and if you're ready, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Yay! Yay! So I know they've, they've already left, but just a, just a big thanks to Dina and the members of the board uh, from the Chamber Board of Directors for coming out and uh, recognizing that it looks beautiful in here. So we appreciate them taking some time out of their evening to come and celebrate with us as we break in the new council chambers. So don't... So we're going to let things just kind of settle for now. Um, no reason to throw things up suddenly because in the future we're looking at monitors in three of the locations up on the wall. Uh, yeah. 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 So when we do that, then you'll have spaces that are filled and then you have to figure out what to do with the rest of it. But we're not, we're not jumping at anything right now. And we don't have, we don't have the pictures available and the funds to do it. So. Work in progress still. Yep. But, but it does look great. I think everybody can agree. Chairs are very comfortable. No napping. Okay. Um, all right. At this time, we'll move down to the city administrator's report. You got an updated report at your seats. Um, draw your attention to the, the latest two items I've got in here. Five, item five is uh, a health care committee. Uh, Alderman Eidman and Alderman Donovan have been on the Healthcare committee the last few years, I think actually since we created it. Um, we need to meet in March. We have one employee that we need to get nominated to be part of that committee and then sit down and talk about health insurance. They will get together. We'll uh, talk with Lincoln and Insurance, our, our, our representative, and SONUS Benefits, and come up with a plan for health insurance to bring back to the board 
which will have to be approved by the end of April because we have to have it approved by May 1st, goes into effect June 1st. So I don't know if there's going to be any changes or not for what the rates are going to be. Standard across the, uh, uh, from what I've seen from other sources, is an 8% increase. Seems to be what everybody's seeing. So we may have to look at that. Maybe it'll be less. Uh, I think we've had uh, high utilization this year, so I think that will uh, that will hurt us. Uh, so we'll be getting those that group together. And then item six, Cochran Engineering received a letter from the Corps of Engineers. They are going to take responsibility for that section of the creek where we're looking at putting in that detention basin, which means they'll have certain requirements. They'll have to be involved in the detention basin development. Uh, they're trying to determine what kind of oversight the, the Corps is going to have. Uh, and then Cochrane can move forward with how the design will look and what the, what the Corps' part of that will be. It's a nationwide permit, but it depends on which nationwide permit, and they haven't told them what, what that is yet. So, so that's where we are with that. So does that take their jurisdiction all the way up that, you know, I mean, that's up in there where we're talking about the basin. Yeah. In my definitions, it's not a creek. Right. It's a ditch. There is a certain way they've they've named that. I, I can't think of what the term is because I'm not familiar with it. But that there is a there is headwaters that can that can come from the creek, the South Cabaret Creek. That's part of that that watershed. So they claim jurisdiction on that. This is for the proposed detention basin <coughs> there by the new uh, school. By the school. Yeah. Yep, sure is. That's part of that uh, uh, Waterways Act that the uh, uh, EPA and uh, Corps of Engineers uh, try to pass, I guess. Right. right. So they've got the drawing done with the expansion. They just had to have to wait for the Corps of Engineers and then see what type of permit they're going to be required before we can move forward. That's just More delays, more costs. Yeah. More red tape for the federal government. Yeah. Any questions on anything else? Jim? Um, just to go back to your uh, number two, McCann and Marketing. Uh, they presented to the TAC and the TPC the uh, marketing plan that we received that grant for. Uh, just that I, I don't know if we have um, we have committee or staff of uh, at the end we have committee reports. Well, it can, but yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll speak, but he was outstanding. Um, that uh, and I'll let Happy also speak to it. But McDaniel's came down and presented their uh, marketing plan for the next five years for the tourism department, and uh, that guy and his um, uh, staff person uh, did I thought did an excellent job. And you can just tell the passion about it, and they just, I think, put a lot of effort into it. And uh, it, 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 it's just a preliminary plan, and it was just, I thought it was really well done and really well thought out. And so I think it's going to really help Aaron um, in his new role uh, to kind of move the, the tourism uh, needle uh, quite a bit. So. so the plan will also, it is looked at as an economic development tool. So there's a branding that's going to, take place that they want to do well if they're going to do that then i don't want to redo our website which i plan on doing the city website this year however they want consistency across the board with other agencies so we'll probably hold off on our website until that that time but they look at it as there's a whole wheel of of economic development that comes into play with with tourism and marketing the city <laughs> He's worked with a lot of Missouri and Illinois towns and entities, and he just he knows all the grants that the state puts out. <laughs> just he, he's got a really good uh, flow for the opportunities that we would have, and the different stages and some of the grants that we could apply for and how it would all fit in. And, um, uh, and it was I don't know, it was just really well done. So and then I know um, his he does have that economic development approach. And I know our Tourism department doesn't really, we aren't tasking that person with that mission uh, for economic development. It just ties in really well. And I, I guess what he explains it is they come here, uh, we spend a lot of money to get them to come here. And if you get somebody that really enjoys their stay and, and likes it, uh, they would be a good person to live here as well. And so he just kind of takes it to that next level. It's like, you know, you can also encourage them to move here, not just come here for a weekend, but to move here permanently. And so, uh, 
Um, it was interesting the way he approaches that. And some of the, like Jackson's in Illinois. Uh, he does Cuba, Fort Leonard Wood area. Um, they have a big CBB out there, and he, he works with them and a bunch of other town. Uh, the one in Iowa where the picker guy is, um, he worked with that. Um, There's a bunch of them. He's just a very thoughtful and well played out play. I think it's going to really help Aaron. So the plan goes to back to the tourism group for their final approval, and then it will we'll bring it to the board, let you see it. Uh, but they, uh, we want to get them to give any input and then finish up the plan, and then you'll you'll have a chance to see what uh, what all he has involved in it. Great, thanks for the update, Alderman Steiger. Um, move to staff reports, and first up tonight we'll have uh, Chief Crump. The only changes on my report from what you have, the um, two new handheld radios for us to be digital compliant, um, they came in and then six of our 12 car radios are in and they'll start the install here within about two weeks. Um, the K9 vehicle is scheduled for upfitting uh, April 2nd and then the new truck arrived Friday and we're just waiting on a date for it to get upfitted. Any other questions? Thanks, Chief. Then next up, we'll have Steve Wilson with the Alliance Water. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as most of you know, last month was a very cold month to start out with. Uh, we went through a cold spell where we were averaging two to three main breaks a day. The guys were out there working sub-zero temperatures. Uh, one day was uh, about 15 hours straight. Three main breaks that one day. Uh, just want to thank the community for the support first. Uh, when we were out there working, we hadn't seen support like we have in a long time. Uh, we had people bringing us coffees, hot chocolates, um, Domino's delivered food to us uh, while we were out there. It was it was real nice. So, but yeah, that consumed up a lot of our time. Um, the majority of uh, the time during the inclement weather that we weren't snow plowing or fixing water leaks. Uh, staff was busy doing maintenance on vehicles, uh, street sweeper for one, uh, it's unwinterized, ready to go. Uh, one of the, tra one of the, <laughs> uh, one of the trailers, uh, got going through one end to the other bearings, tires, um, found an issue with the, with wiring for the trailer brakes. We addressed that as well and, uh, straightened up some bent metal on it. So, um, if anybody's driven by the street department, there is, uh, we continue to work on a couple small offices up there. Uh, that's progressing well, I think. So, anybody has any questions? Steve, uh, the new hybrid at seven four five playing well. Are you are you aware that uh, there was some agreement to put concrete around that? No. Very well. Uh, I don't think if there was an agreement, it would have been with uh, with Joker's. Well, I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I can't speak to it because I wasn't there, but uh, can you follow up with uh, maybe Dennis back at see if there's something we need to manage? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Thanks, Steve. Are we going to have a public hearing or are we going to follow back up if need be? Oh, the public hearing, yeah. Okay, this time we'll move to public comment. <clears throat> My name's Dwayne Gettinger. I uh, live at 11458 State Route M, which is five houses just on the outside of St. Genevieve. What I'm here tonight to do is discuss the uh, the increasing rate in the fire tag. I myself am a fireman in the adjoining fire department. I do understand the need to raise the rates and everything. However, <clears throat> my fire tag is twice as much as my neighbor, which is one house down. And the explanation has always been, even back when uh, Chief Schwimp was the chief, 
I live within so many thousand feet of a water source, being the water tower on um, M Road, the Ozora Road. Well, his explanation always has been, you're saving me money on my homeowner's insurance. But now, since you've raised your rates, you've doubled my fire tag to $200 a month or a year, which is $100 more than my next door neighbor. And you're not saving me $100 on my homeowner's insurance. So I don't see where we came up with the formula that you are going to tax me or charge me more to save me money on my homeowners. You have a very good police department in town. Crime rate's low. Homeowners insurance is low. Do you charge them more for police protection? I don't think so. So my thing is, like I said, I'm, a, I'm the assistant chief in Ozora. We raised our rates to $65, which is, you know, a little bit. It helps out. So I was wondering, what could we do about this? Um, it seems extreme to me to charge me and my neighbors double when you're not really saving me any money. So that's what I'm here to discuss. You know, we're, and another thing I kind of thought of, we pay for a tag, we have no say-so. We have no, where's our money going as tag holders? Do we have no say-so? We, we don't know. You know, we have to take your word for it. You, we have no alderman because we live in the county. So, you know, where did we come with it? I could see raising the rates. I'm not against that. I totally understand. But $100 in one year is excessive to me. And it seems like you're gouging me. You're saving me money on my homeowner's insurance, so why do you penalize me? You're a community. You, sh you should be glad to help out your citizens, not penalize them for helping them. So that's my thing I'm here to ask about tonight. Uh, happy, Mr. Mayor. I know yeah. we can't have an exchange, but I'd like to make an offer to uh, the way and after the meeting if you're available or if you have to leave, Sean. I've got some some of that explanation for you here. We can get together at your convenience when I I'm more than happy. I don't think there is a good explanation. I, mean, I understand. You, it's just, you, what are you going to do? You're doubling your budget. You say that this fire department belongs to the city. We're just tag holders with a subscription for service. Where's our money go? You, nobody can tell us because it's always been that way. Well, I don't think it should always be that way. And if you're going to want support from the community to go to a district, you're going to have a hard sale especially for me as a chief or assistant chief in the joining department. And I'm not going to support it if we can't figure this out because how much does an average town or house in St. Jude pay for fire protection? Do they pay $200 a year, $100 a year? I don't think so. So I'm paying 200 and I don't think it's fair. So that's, thank you for your time. All right. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, any other public comment at this time? Okay. Um, this time we will hold a uh, public hearing. Uh, the mayor and board and mayor and board of aldermen will conduct a public hearing, at which time citizens may be heard on the proposed water sewer rates to be set by the board of aldermen. We will open this public hearing at six nineteen. Um, okay, if there's no no comment or yeah, anything, yep. Yeah. Uh, just for the public, um, if you're not reading, um, we'll notice uh, mm -hmm. the proposed rates are going to be an increase on the water rates of 2%, the sewer rates of 2%, and some of the industrial customers at 3% uh, increase is the uh, proposed. Uh, raises on this. Okay. Any other comments at this time? Okay. Okay.
Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing at 6.20. Move to tonight's consent agenda. Um, there's some closed session minutes coming around before you close. Okay. Believe so. Uh, I'd like to second it and uh, second the motion. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No, no old business to discuss tonight, so we will move on to some new business. Uh, we have an approval of a low bid. Uh, from Joker's Paving in the amount of $132,295 for the North 4th Street Drainage Paving Project. And just, uh, yes. Um, just kind of curious why the, what happened in, you know, between the engineer's initial uh, asking of this and then a $44,000 for his initial his initial estimate. Um, we discussed that. He said, if that's, you know, the market rate at this point, there's, you know, it's based on what he had for mobilization and earthwork and all that. Uh, either at this time, costs have gone up or there's, you know, some other issue that we don't, we do, we don't see, but that was, that was the low bid of three bidders that we had. I mean, right. Everybody was pretty close together. Sorry, Bob. Do you, do you get line item detail on both the uh, proposal and the, and the new cost? We do, and I sent that to the engineer to review to see if there was something that looked uh, out of out of whack with the low bid. And uh, he just he said, I you know, said should we not go with that that bid? And he said, well, it seems to be market rate because you got everybody pretty close to it. So that that would be the, what needs to be done. The cost is what needs to be done because we're looking at concrete, the storm water, and the asphalt. So in your opinion, you've got two sides of that equation. So the side that's likely off is the estimate. Yeah, Poss very possible. I guess my question, you know, Happy, is when he, you know, when the engineer goes in and determines this estimate, I mean, how much work has he actually put into this? Uh, you know, is there any design work already done, or is this just a wild guess? No, this is already with the design work. We have plans, and plans have been put out for bid. So that's all been all been put together, uh, knowing what areas uh, that we're starting and stopping, what needs to be installed. No, I meant his initial estimate. And that was based on the final drawings, because I asked him for an estimate of what uh, what he thought the cost was going to be, so we could compare with what our bids are. So from his initial estimate to the actual bid, it changed forty four thousand dollars. No, no, this right. is this is the bid estimate. Right. Yeah. So the, you're talking about the, the initial initial investment. Yes. Or, and, and we didn't have we didn't come up with a, a, a fee at that point because we didn't know the specifics of the of what was going to need to be replaced or or uh, repaved. I'm just wondering how he comes up with that initial estimate because I, you know. Ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars would be one thing, but a third of the cost of the whole project just seems an excess to me. But you know, and I don't know if there's any way we can prepare for that, or you know, just say oops and accept it. I mean, it's the worst part of that street, and that's why we held off paving, right. or just doing the overlay. Um, so that we could attempt to it or at best to get the water to flow down to inlets at the end of that street. We've had other projects that have come back with a thirty plus thousand change order because it wasn't figured correctly in the first place. So maybe hopefully this would 
No guarantees. Right? No guarantees because we could get hit with another. That just, you know, um, that just seems in excess to me and stuff that we should get a better estimate, you know, going into these projects that we can be better prepared. Yeah. It still is within our, what we budgeted this year for right. street projects. So if it was outside of that, I would say we had, a, we had an issue, but we're within that spec. So. You know, if there's anything we can do to help them get closer, I think, I hope we do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did the specs change? Did we go back and do more, um, change the design and, and what they did on was different than what the engineers estimated originally? Again, the, the, we didn't have what, what, what uh, Alderman Donovan's talking about. We didn't have a, an, an initial type of estimate. This is the estimate based on the drawings because I asked for that information so that we could send out a grid so we could compare what the numbers were when they came back. So that's the estimate I got was about 88,000 for the 87.7. It, yeah, it will. Because what you'll, what you'll have is a motion to approve the bid, then we'll bring back a contract for you to approve at the next yep. meeting. To approve the low bid of Joker Stadium. <laughs> okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Right. Any opposed? <clears throat> we'll take us to a first reading of bill number 4606. This is an ordinance amending section. 200.015 chief of police appointment term salary and removal yes uh, i needed some clarification on paragraph a and I, I may be misinterpreting that but it seems to uh it's set a qualification for that uh, that candidate chief of police be a resident of the city and i wanted to know if that was intentional or am i misinterpreting that I think there are maybe a couple of issues with this one. Just table this and get. What? Why are we? What were? What were the changes that we were going to potentially? The the only discuss? change to this uh, ordinance was uh, because there's a new uh, requirement for the uh, that's set forth in uh, paragraph C. Uh, for a new hire or police chief, they have to complete a uh, police like training state course. Statute, I guess. State so statute yeah. change. And so anybody hired, yeah. yeah, anybody hired after August of this last year has to go through that. So that's the really only So the only change. difference right now is we added paragraph C. Correct. To our, our original Correct. Well, the board, am I, am I wrong? If we, if we pass this bill, do we then restrict that position to having a, a city resident? Well, we already had a resolution made that abolish that part of this. That, that's what my concern is. If that's still a whole water. I thought I thought we waived that. I don't. Did we amend the ordinance? Because I, thought, I was I was going off. There, there must have been another ordinance. I was going off another section of the existing ordinance yeah. that that I saw on the website. If it's been updated, then then it's my mistake. I didn't catch it that we've amended that. So. Um, so. Should, should, so we we can table that, and I can I can change that. I apologize. I thought that was just a waiver there. I didn't catch it. I'm sorry, Mark. In a future bill, you said you would remove that. Yeah, we we can we just table it till the next meeting. We'll we'll fix it. This isn't an, an emergency. The only change is if we have another chief come in, we want to have this in place. It was clear that that training program had to be had to be completed, and it's just an update in the law and uh, my oversight with regard to that residency requirement. So I apologize for that. A motion table, or? if you don't mind. The next right. motion table. Second. Okay, uh, so the motion is to table this to a future meeting, and we do have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, just for, I mean, I had a hard time figuring out why that was up. So, is there a way we could put a summary or something? That's, I just ran out of time to put a summary together and okay. throw it. No, like, I, I can't. Yeah. I don't know what the original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the, the I intended to have that as a second whereas um, in that, which mentions the uh, chief of police appointed after August 20, 2023. So I could, I could have spelled it out a little more in detail. Yeah. Still need a staff report. Yeah. Okay. Move on to a first reading of bill number 4607. This is an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending municipal code chapter 715 user charge systems, specifically section 715.040 user charge rates subsections A and B by revising the water use charges. Yeah, I had a, just a brief discussion about this and stuff, but I think as Alderman Seiger brought out, you know, this is a 2% increase. Um, does that reflect covering our costs, just that 2% or? It's going to cover what we, what we take in as compared to what our expenditures are. <coughs> That's about it. It's not looking, I'm not trying to add anything beyond that. Uh, because we had a deficit this last year, if you check the audit, correct, uh, and that's what I'm trying to cover this year. We've been trying to do two percent each year, but we're not. We probably at this point need to do a um, a user rate study and see what the rates need to be. Because I know we faced a rate increase with Alliance also and stuff, and just trying to, you know, keep this under control that we're covering our costs. Yeah. So. We haven't anticipated, you know, adding on another, and it would just be three percent of what their what their total is every month. Um, this was what we thought would, would, based on what our revenues are, this would cover uh, whatever the increase is there. Yep. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Move on to a first reading of bill number 4608. This is an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending municipal code chapter 715 user charge system, specifically section 715.140 sewer charges and billing, subsection D by revising the sewer use charges. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, we about wraps up our new business. Any uh, any discussion? Anything that anybody'd like to bring before council? I'd like to welcome uh, Christina Alexander to the Tourism Advisory Council as well as the winner. We uh, were uh, in the consent agenda, so they were nominated by the mayor and we just approved them and we're happy to have them award on the uh, CSC of, um, as new members. Wonderful. Anything else? Okay. With that, we'll go ahead and adjourn.